Welcome, and thank you for coming out to the Volo Auto Museum. I'm Brian Grams. Now, before you take today's tour, I want to take a few minutes of your time to let you know what you're going to see and a little bit of history here about the Auto Museum. A little bit about the Auto Museum here. We were built from an old 1800s dairy farm. The oldest structure on the property is the big red barn located right at our front entrance. That building was built in 1848. Now, California didn't become a state until 1850, which makes that building older than the state of California. My family bought the property here back in 1960. They lived in the farmhouse and they ran a resale business out of the red barn. They would go to garage sales, comb the ads and the classifieds looking for anything they could resell, whether it's lamps, pottery, clothing, furniture. It was just a regular thrift store. Eventually, that thrift store grew into the antique malls as you know it now. Now there's about 300 dealers, and if you take a walk over there, it's pretty much a museum by itself. There's a lot of memories. Every time I walk through, I see toys from you know, when I was a kid, so I'm not into antiques, but I tell you, I do love walking through there because there's always something of interest. My father, Greg, and my uncle, Bill, they were the ones that brought the cars to the property here. They were teenagers and, you know, after uh, hours when they were on their own time, they kind of tinkered with cars. They bought an old car, fixed it up a little bit, turned it around, flipped it, made a few bucks. So then they took that money and went ahead and reinvested it into another car. Eventually, their inventory grew, their reputation grew, and it evolved into a classic car dealership. Now, one thing that's kind of funny is, you know, my grandpa, he was in the resale business and my uncle and my father were playing with the cars on their own time and it got a little bit distracting. So my grandfather came to my dad and my uncle and said, hey, are we in the resale business or are we in the car business? My dad and his brother looked at each other and then looked at my grandpa and said, you know what? We made more money on one car than you made in a whole month in the resale business. So we're in the car business. And that is how the Volvo Auto Museum was born. Now, the Auto Museum, it started out as just a few cars. It's grown over the years. Originally, it was just maybe a handful of dusty old cars in a building with a gravel floor, no heat and no plumbing. But it was the start. And those cars eventually turned into something more. Once they got a reputation for having these old cars, there was people that started coming out just to see the cars themselves. They had no interest in buying them, even though that's what they were there for. They were for sale. They just wanted to look at it. So then they started charging. It was a $1 admission to get into the museum at that time, and we were only open on weekends. The museum evolved into what you see today, which is a multi-million dollar tourist attraction that pulls people from all over the world and the oldest collector car dealership in the industry. We sell about 1,200 antique cars every year, and we get in about 200 to 250,000 people, like yourselves, on an annual basis. Now that I've told you a little history about the place, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what you're gonna see. Now when we designed the place, we decided we wanted something for the entire family, not just mom, not just dad, not just the kids. There's something here for everyone. There's a total of 33 exhibits, which are kids' exhibits, snowmobiles, bikes, motorcycles, scooters, military, and just a lot of different oddball things that we picked up along the way. So be sure to see everything. Every corner of every space of this property has something in it to look at. For example, our General Lee. A lot of General Lees out there, but ours is considered the Holy Grail. And the reason for that is it's one of the very first ones ever built. It was built for the first season of Dukes of Hazard. The museum boasts about three to 400 cars at any time. TV and movie cars, celebrity owned cars, and cars for the kids, and cars that shouldn't even exist, like a running and driving piano, or a 14 foot tall roller skate that you can take down the road. But we also have a lot of your production cars, cars from the 50s, antique cars, Duesenbergs, and those cars are actually all for sale. So they're on a constant rotating basis. You can come here every 30 days and see a new display of cars. You're gonna see a lot of things here that you aren't gonna see anywhere else. We've got a lot of rare automobile memorabilia, like a cutaway Chevrolet engine that was used for the dealerships back in 67. And you can press the button and see how everything works. Things like a Pet Boys 14 foot tall statue. They only made six of them back in the 1930s. We also have our evolution of transportation and lodging, which will take you back in time and see how people travel starting with the 1800s and moving your way up to the 1970s. 
And when you first came in, you walked through our pizza place. And that by itself is a museum too. You walked past a lot of things already and you may not even have seen them. Did you see the 89 Batmobile in our Bat Cave? And did you see Elvis Presley and Buddy Holly's guitars hanging along the wall when you were walking in? In our pizza parlor, we also have an animatronic pirate show, much like what you'd see in the 1980s. Now, this pirate show's been fully restored, and we got it working for the first time after 25 years. So be sure to sit down, rest your feet, and get a free show. When you're walking through our showrooms, be sure to read the signs that are provided with our different TV and movie cars. There's some interesting history and some interesting facts behind that. Like our Terminator car. It's loaded with bullet holes, but do you know how they got there? Read the sign and you'll find out. Or like our Christine car. You know how Stephen King likes to drop Easter eggs in his new movies? He requested our Christine car to be in his new movie, 112263, with James Franco. And a lot of people ask, how do you get your cars? Well, we've been around here for many, many years, so a lot of the cars actually come to us. But we've also gone out and searched for things, too. We go to different car shows, auctions, and when it comes to the TV and movie cars, those are especially hard to get. Fortunately for us, we were able to get in the right niche and get to know the people at the film industries like Warner Brothers and Universal, and we actually work with them now. Like, have you seen the movie The Great Gatsby? You know, the yellow car that Leonardo DiCaprio's driving? They got those cars from us. Or the Superman, Man of Steel. We handled all the cars for that movie as well. Now, when you're walking through the place, it is a big facility. If you see everything that's here and walk through every aisle, you're gonna walk a total of seven miles. Now, you were given a map to help guide you through the facilities, but in case you do get lost, keep your eyes out for the signs. There are signs located all throughout the museum to point you in whatever direction that you're looking for. Now that I've given you some history on the Auto Museum and a little insight as to what you're gonna see, meet me up in showroom four and we'll talk a little bit more. I'll meet you up there.